Hello, Namaskar and welcome. Analysis of Finance, ANOVA. And now we are going to start discussion on two-way classification. Yes, we have already discussed one-way classification. In case of one-way classification, we check the effect of single independent variable on a dependent variable. Yes, varieties of or various levels of single independent level and its effect or effect of change in levels of independent variable on single dependent variable. Now the dependent variable remains single, production or performance. But we want to check the effect of two independent variables or changes in two independent variables or varieties of two independent variables on that single dependent variable. Then it is called two-way classification. So the dependent variable remains single production or performance when we are interested in checking the effect of various levels of single independent variable on the single dependent variable it is called one way classification and when we are interested in checking the effect of various levels of two independent variables on single dependent variable it is called two way classification yes and both the independent variables are under the full control of the researcher. Researcher manipulates or researcher can manipulate the independent variables to see, to study the effect of this kind of manipulation in independent variables or levels of independent variables on the dependent variables. And yes, now what about procedure? More or less the procedure is same as it was in case of or rather it is in case of one way classification. We have to prepare two tables, columns, total of all the columns, squared values of all the elements and again total of all the columns. But the additional thing is now in the first table we are going to find the totals of all the rows. One more thing, in case of one way classification. In all the columns, there can be different number of elements. But in case of two-way classification, there should be the equal number of elements in all the columns. Because we want to consider the rows also. So in case of two-way classification, these two tables can be either square or rectangle. It is not compulsory to have the number of columns and number of rows equals. There can be number of rows and number of columns can be unequal. So the table can be rectangle or equal. So the table can be square. But the equal number of elements will be there in all the columns. Similarly, equal number of elements will be there in all the rows. The number of elements in the column, all the columns will be equivalent to the number of rows. The number of elements in all rows will be equivalent to the number of columns. These are the basics. Now, the values, summations of all the rows, all the columns and grand total is T, we are aware. Square values of all the elements, then columnar summations, then row wise summation, grand total must be equal. It is very simple. Total number of elements will be either summation of the number of elements in each row or number of elements in each column. But the sign we are going to use is for number of elements in column, we are going to use capital N1, capital N2 and so on. For number of elements in rows, we are going to use the sign small n, small n1, small n2 and so on. Okay. Now, we have two tables with original values or say um, uh, original values, but we have changed the magnitude by coding the data and then squared values of all the elements in the first table are written in the second table and summation. Now what are the steps? Yes, N, total number of elements under study, T4, grand total, either grand total of summation of rows or grand total of summation of columns, that must be equal. On the basis of these two, we can find correction factor, T square upon it. All these are similar to the procedure in case of one-way classification. 
एस एस टी अगेन सेम यस ग्रांड टोटल ऑफ क्वेड वैल्यूज माइनस करेक्शन फैक्टर दैट इज एस एस टी एस एस सी अगेन दैट इज सेम यस स्क्वेयर ऑफ टोटल ऑफ दी कॉलम्स इन द फर्स्ट टेबल एंड रिस्पेक्टिव टोटल इज डिवाइडेड बाय द रिस्पेक्टिव नंबर ऑफ एलिमेंट्स इन द कॉलम सिग्मा एक्स वन होल स्क्वेयर सी बोथ दिस थिंग्स आर डिफरेंट बोथ दिस थिंग्स आर डिफरेंट वी आर गोइंग टू टेक दिस समेशन एंड स्क्वेयर वैल्यू डिवाइडेड बाय एन वन दिस समेशन एंड स्क्वेयर वैल्यू डिवाइडेड बाय दिस एंड अगेन टी स्क्वेयर अपॉन एन इज सब्ट्रेक्टेड करेक्शन फैक्टर इज सब्ट्रेक्टेड the additional thing is sum of squares between rows yes rows sigma r1 the whole square divided by n1 number of elements in the first row sigma r1 the whole square is divided by number of elements in the second row and so on and subtraction of correction factor yes someone may say that why should we find out these totals just to check the correction okay just to check the correction because sst can be found only on the basis of these summations it is not compulsory to get these totals but as a check point i suggest to get these totals okay now we have ssc sst and ssr yes in case of one way classification the sum of squares of errors or residuals or within samples sse was sst minus ssc here the shortcut formula of sse is sst minus summation of ssc and ssr now we have all the required things so we can prepare an ova table an ova table in case of two way classification is also nothing but the logical extension of the anova in case of one way classification see the second row the entire second row is actually introduced in the same anova table source of variation between columns that is ssc source of variation between rows ssr error or residual sse all these four values we have already calculated yes first degree of freedom is number of columns minus 1 second degree of freedom for rows is number of rows minus 1 number of rows 1 2 3 1 2 3 so on third degree of freedom that is in case of two way classification only the multiplication of these two and summation of all these three must be n minus 1 this is also a very important check point now mean sum of squares or mean squares again the same thing msc that means four column it is ssc divided by first degree of freedom msr that stands for rows ssr divided by second degree of freedom msc that stands for errors or residuals that is sse divided by degrees of number uh, sorry degrees of freedom number 3 now watch this is common denominator for column and for rows two separate f ratios are calculated yes two separate f ratios are calculated for columns and rows f ratio for column is msc divided by mse and f ratio for row is msr divided by mse both these f ratios are separately compared with the critical value of f ratio the critical value of f ratio is found on the basis of these nu3 and nu1 and nu3 and nu2 same way but in the first row in the table of f ratio we take the value of <coughs> degree of freedom number 3 and in the opposite side we find the intersection of degree of freedom number 3 and degree of freedom number 1 similarly degree of freedom number 3 and degree of freedom number 2 that will give us two separate critical values of f ratio and individually calculated value of f ratio for column with the critical f ratio for the column similarly calculated value of f ratio for the rows is compared with the critical value of f ratio for the rows and 
conclusion for columns as well as rows both are say derived separately so in all there must be null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for column null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis for rows yes this calculation sorry this calculations and then anova then critical values for columns and rows and comparison of calculated values with respective critical values so there must be two conclusion for column and for row so it is quite say lengthier if we compare the entire procedure with the procedure for one way classification but very much similar so i don't think it is say hard if you have first learned the one way classification properly so now from the next lecture we are going to start the discussion on various different types of problems on two way classification that's it thank you very much